we begin with breaking news on Wall Street after a tumultuous day for markets across the globe. The Dow's down more than a thousand points as that global sell off intensifies. We're looking at the worst three days in the NASDAQ in more than two years. Global markets tumbled over fears of a U.S. recession. Investors unsettled by rising interest rates in Japan. The panic reverberating back to Australia, but it didn't alarm the RBA governor. We're watching it very closely. I think things have settled down a bit today. I think we just need to have a little bit of caution and a little bit of calm. The Reserve Bank left rates on hold at 4.35%. Australians are doing it tough enough already. Uh, the last thing they needed today was more cost of living pressure. But Michelle Bullock warned inflation wasn't falling fast enough, leaving the board with limited options. There were only two things on the table. Hold, and hold accepting that we might have to hold for some time, or raise. The markets are saying rates should be lower. Have the markets got it right? And uh, is a recession on the way? What I'm trying to tell the markets today is that I think they've probably expectations for interest rate cuts are a little bit ahead of themselves. Are we heading for a recession? I don't believe so and the board doesn't believe so. Oftentimes we see that share markets can actually lead the rest of the economy and when you have big falls in shares that can actually mean that you are going into recession. The RBA now expects unemployment to rise sooner than expected and it will take longer to get underlying inflation back to target. They now expect that we will get to the midpoint of the target by the end of 2026. Previously it was the middle of 2026. We're seeing from the RBA today that the economy has been operating beyond its capacity even more so than they previously estimated and we think that interest rate cuts are not going to be arriving in short order. Despite the RBA governor ruling out a rate cut this year, two of Australia's biggest banks are forecasting a rate cut by Christmas, with the money market expecting one by February. Some economists think households will need to wait even longer. So we're not expecting a cut from the RBA until May of next year. I think another six months we will see more weakness in many parts of the economy and lower inflation, which will give them the green light to cut rates. And that couldn't come soon enough for Stacey Gleeson, who's seen her repayments skyrocket. Pre-COVID, I was looking at around 1300 for mortgage repayments per month. These days it's more like 2000 so pretty big step. She had been hoping to move to a suburb closer to her family, but that's now not possible. Bought here nine years ago in Logan Lee and have been thinking about upgrading the last couple of years but obviously things changed with interest rates rising um, and yeah it just kind of became more of a dream than a reality. A dream on hold for now. With the RBA still concerned about the potential for more upside risk to the economy, investors could be forgiven for wondering why, after yesterday's wild ride on the markets, some traders started betting on a chance the RBA would deliver a rate cut this afternoon. To clarify the dramatic market movements of recent days and to discuss whether more market volatility is likely, I spoke to AMP's Head of Investment Strategy and Economics, Shane Oliver. Welcome. Why was the sentiment on the ASX so different today compared to yesterday? Look, I think there were a couple of reasons. Firstly, yesterday's sharp fall of 3.7% had largely anticipated a big fall on Wall Street. Wall Street perhaps didn't fall as much as feared and consequently um, share markets, this local share market had a bit of a rebound. It doesn't mean we're out of the woods. Um, markets don't go in straight lines. It's just that there wasn't any more bad news uh, hitting us from, from internationally. What exactly did happen yesterday? Were investors' fears about the likelihood of a US recession or the unwinding of the yen carry trade or frothy markets over, overhyped on AI justified? Look, I think those concerns were justified. We were, we were vulnerable to a correction, a pullback at some point in time. Uh, the US economy is at risk of going into recession. Unemployment has been rising there, so that is a valid concern. By the same token, share markets had had, had, had very strong gains that had pushed valuations to extremes. And, of course, that all got combined late last week with the Bank of Japan raising interest rates 
running the risk that investors say, well, I was borrowing in Japan at zero. Now I'm going to have to pay interest on that. Maybe I should take my money back to Japan. So an unwinding of the Japanese carry trade. So there was a bunch of factors here driving the, the turbulence we've seen, partly economic fundamentals, partly also the positioning of investors unwinding their, their speculative bets. You mentioned the Bank of Japan. Is that why Japan's equity markets had their worst session in decades yesterday and why markets in Asia, the ASX included, were the worst hit on the global sell-off? I have a feeling that what went on in Japan exaggerated the sell-off in our region yesterday. Uh, the Japanese share market had gone to record highs. It was doing spectacularly well. Suddenly, we see the Bank of Japan get a lot more hawkish and uh, that, of course, uh, then led to investors thinking, well, maybe we'd better buy Japanese yen. The Japanese yen surged. Share markets globally started to get the jitters, which just re reinforced that upwards trend in the Japanese yen, which then blew back to the Japanese share market and pushed it down 12% or so in one day for a 25% fall from its recent highs. That, of course, then also affected our local share market and probably exaggerated the size of the falls we saw. And so did the Bank of Japan get its timing wrong when it decided last week to lift interest rates? Look, I think the Bank of Japan had a valid reason to start lifting interest rates. Uh, they have been coming from close to zero. We have seen the Japanese economy doing a lot better. Inflation is running around target. So it made sense to move. But they didn't realise, they didn't know uh, that just around the corner uh, was some jitters coming out of Wall Street. So I think the two things combined to give us this this sort of mini quake we saw going through investment markets. But I don't think you blame the Bank of Japan for that. They weren't to know uh, what was about to happen in the next couple of days. The Bank of Japan has signalled it is prepared to raise rates again. Do you think now it will be waiting for the US Fed to cut first? I think the BOJ will wait a little bit longer here, given what's happened. The sharp fall in the Japanese share market is warning them they need to be a little bit cautious in not moving too quickly. So I think they'll go back uh, to a somewhat more gradualist approach going forward. Yes, we probably will see another tightening by the Bank of Japan, but it's probably going to be a smaller one and it's probably going to be several months away before they move. Is there a valid question to be asked about the relationship between markets and central banks and who is leading who? Look, I think there's always been a bit of a, uh, to and fro between markets and central banks. Uh, markets often tend to run ahead of themselves. Central banks then start to raise interest rates to slow down economies and cool down investment markets, which then creates falls in investment markets. But you don't want markets to come down too much. So then central banks have to cut in and start cutting interest rates. So I think both are central to the business cycle and the investment cycle, and it's very hard to see a way which uh, removes that linkage. So I think the reality we're seeing here is, is just the way markets work, and we're always going to see that as long as we have free investment markets. Are there lessons from what we've seen for Australia? The RBA decided to hold interest rates steady, but admits it did discuss hiking them. Was that the right call? Look, to be honest with you, I think the Reserve Bank was probably leaning a little bit too hawkish. I was surprised that they weren't a little bit more concerned about what's going on in the US. Yes, some of the volatility we've seen in investment markets was just due to positioning, speculative moves, but a big chunk of it is actually due to economic fundamentals. And the reality here is that there is a high risk of recession in the US. That will have an impact on Australia. The other thing, I guess, that you can't ignore about the US is that just like in Australia, they've been seeing a big decline in job vacancies. That's now bleeding through to higher unemployment. We've also seen, been seeing a big fall in job vacancies here. The likelihood is that that will also show up in much higher unemployment than the Reserve Bank is allowing for. So I, I must admit I was a little bit surprised at the hawkishness uh, coming from the Reserve Bank today. When do you expect the RBA to move off 4.35%? Look, to be honest with you, when the, you see the RBA's commentary today, it looks like it's a long way away. It's not consistent with their current thinking. But I suspect that they will be forced to start cutting interest rates at least in the next six months. So our base case is for a cut in February. But there is a very high chance that that will start to occur earlier, mainly because of weaker economic data, both internationally and also in Australia. Shane Oliver, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.